Hey there, welcome to today's lesson on section 13.5, which is titled Apply, Apply <laughs> Law Signs. The law signs is used to solve a triangle with no right angles. So obviously we'll be doing with non-right triangles today. Here is the law of signs. It is right there. It's a pretty simple concept. So you might want to draw this uh, triangle on your notes. But let's say we have triangle ABC. Here's little A, here's little B, and here's little C. Basically what this states is that the ratio of the sine of an angle with the side opposite that angle will always be the same. This is true for any triangle. It's actually even true for right triangles if you want to try for that, but um, of course if you don't have a right triangle you can't use your standard Sokotoa or your basic Sokotoa. So in this case, you would uh, have to use law signs. So simply the ratio of the sine of an angle with the side opposite to it. So like sine angle A over A equals sine angle B over B, which also equals sine angle C over C. Um, there are three cases in which law signs can be used. If you have um, SAA, ASA, or SSA. So for example, if you need these two angles and this side, then you can use the law of sines to get that side. And then of course you could find this angle because all things have to have the 180 and then you can use law of sines again to get that side. If you had ASA, So you knew an angle, a side, and an angle in that order. You can use um, the fact that all angles have to 180 to get that angle. And then you can use law sine to get this side, because you already know a pair of side and angles. And you can use law signs again to get that side. For SSA, If you need two sides and say this angle, you can use law of sines to get this side. Then you can use law of sines again to get, say, this angle. And then, of course, you can figure out that what that angle is. Uh, so law of sines can be used for any of these three cases. By the way, this we call the ambiguous case. Uh, you'll see a little later why that's called the ambiguous case. Now what about three other scenarios? What if you knew all three angles but none of the sides? Well in this case you are SOL I'm not going to explain what the S stands for, but OL stands for out of luck. So there's nothing you can do about that. But if you um, need these three sides, but none of the angles, or if you need these two sides in the angle between, but not the missing side or the two missing angles. In this case, you'd use the law of cosines. And that will be in section 13.6. So uh, that will be in the video that will be for um, due for block number two. So the next video, which you'd watch on either Tuesday night or Wednesday night, depending on when you have me for block two, 
that'll be on 13.6. All right, so let's now do some examples. Again, we're going to be utilizing the law of sines. So, and if you want to follow along in the book, you can go to page 882 and look at example one. So, always draw a triangle so you know how it looks. So, always draw a triangle. Okay. So, angle C, okay, I didn't obviously draw, draw it very accurately, but whatever. That's 107 degrees. Side B, or angle B, oops, 25 degrees, and side B is 15. So we don't know this side, nor we know this side, nor we know that angle. So let's work it out. Angle A should be easy. Simply 180 degrees minus 25 degrees plus 107 degrees. So that would get me um, 48 degrees. And that is correct. Okay, now we're going to start using the law of sines. So now we know this uh, uh, angle is 48 degrees. Let's say I want side A. So the sine of 48 degrees over little a will equal the sine of 25 degrees over 15. So if you cross multiply, just doing some nifty algebra here. So a will equal 15 times sine 48 degrees over sine 25 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So you do need a calculator to do this. Absolutely crucial here. So 15 sine 48 divided by sine 25. And so A is going to equal roughly 26.376. Okay, cool. And then to get side C, didn't leave myself enough space here. Um, so sine of 107 degrees over C, again, will equal sine 25 degrees over 15. Or you could say sine 48 degrees divided by 26.376. doesn't really matter. Um, you might want to pause the video right now and work it out and see if you get the same answer. So pause the video, work it out. I trust you'll do this. I'll actually do it right now myself. So you should have got 33.942. So we have the triangle solved. So pretty simple process. You obviously need a calculator. So please show up to class with a calculator. Um, sometimes I'm very baffled when people don't bring the calculator to school when they know they have math class, especially when the teacher tells them to bring the calculator. So um, please do that because I don't have enough to lend. I only have mine, and sometimes I forget when I lend mine out. Uh, let's look at number two. So I'll triangle ABC with angle A 115 degrees, A 20, and B equals 11. Okay. So I might draw this triangle a little bit more accurately this time. So we'll call this A. We'll call this B. We'll call that C. That's 115 degrees. Side A is 20. Side B is 11. So we do not know this side. We do not know that angle, nor do we do know that angle. Okay. Now this is part of the SSA case. That's the ambiguous case. Um, I'll explain why it's ambiguous uh, when we're in class during block two. Or sorry, during block one. Um, but if I work this out, the sine 115 degrees over 20, let's say I want to find angle B first. So sine B over 11. So sine B will equal 11 
times sine 115 degrees divided by 20. So B will equal the inverse sine of all that junk. So if I punch this all in my calculator, inverse sine of 11 times sine 115 divided by 20, I should get 29.899 degrees. So, angle C will simply be 180 degrees minus 115 degrees plus 29.899 degrees. So 180 minus 115 plus that. So you should get 35.101 degrees. And then lastly, so we've taken care of these two guys. To get uh, side C, so sine of 35.101 degrees over side C, we equal sine 115 degrees over 20. So I'll let you work that on your own. Tell me what you get. Hopefully you got 12.689, and that would be correct if you got that. Okay, so I'm actually going to stop the video there. Examples 3 and 4 we'll do in class tomorrow, because um, that could take a while. But if you'd like to read ahead and uh, see how those have worked out, or try these on your own, um, we could do that. But I think for now you kind of get the point of what law signs is all about. We'll... Um, review this stuff again in class on block number one, we'll work out examples three and four, and then you'll do classwork on this stuff. So um, looks like we're all set, and I'll see you guys later. And uh, oh yeah, do please uh, print these notes and show me that you've actually taken it, so that uh, that way you can easily take notes on examples three and four in class um, during block one. Goodbye.